and for the latter parts of the marketplace will now cross over to Parliament for the continuous coverage of the vetting of the special prosecutor uh, who is currently has resumed actually uh, under the appointments committee. Let's cross over live to him to take seats from there. It's also, I think, under Section 8, as amended by Section 16, Part 3 of the Act, also lists certain category of positions that holders of dual nationality cannot occupy. Recently, we've been receiving certain petitions and proposals from our brothers and sisters from the diaspora that those aspects of the constitution are, in their view, unconstitutional. It bars them from actively participating in certain aspects of our national life. To the extent that there's a city member of parliament who is leading the group that has even called on the speaker to, as it were, lobby the house to ensure that Honorable, this Honorable Obama, since we have defined his mandate, why well, I don't think, don't you think this question should be to go to the Attorney General? Mr. Chairman, I said I needed his opinion because of those positions, and especially in the area of corruption. I'm coming there because their view is that they are being barred unconstitutionally by the Constitution because they, they, they are dual nationals and they are not being given the opportunity to serve the country in those rules. Honorable Obama, I have to apply the rules strictly, as suggested by Mr. Speaker yesterday, and by Order 671E. A question shall not solicit the expression of opinion or the solution of an after legal case or a hypothetical proposition. Kindly ask another question, please. I don't want to challenge the chairman, but it's okay. I'll, I'll you don't go. have the power to. <laughs> <laughs> because I know it refers to questions to ministers. Thank you. Uh, but, um, Mr. Jabin, let's go to your law under uh, Section 79B on politically exposed persons. P. Peace. Do you think? The definition is exhaustive enough to curb corruption and corruption-related offenses. Now, which, uh, the definition section actually says it includes. So it's an inclusive definition rather than an exclusionary one. And so uh, uh, it will not just uh, 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 be pigeonholed there. When you go to the commencement uh, sessions of the act, it tells, actually, not just the commencement session, the long title of the act itself tells us that it is in respect of uh, public officers, politically exposed persons, and persons in the private sector. So it is all encompassing enough uh, to fight corruption in that context, in that sense. You look at the long title, it is, it is stated there. And then the commencement sessions. Takes me to my second, second question on tracing. Corruption, like you rightly said, is a highly sophisticated um, offense or crime or enterprise. You have been given the power to be able to trace immovable properties, movable, immovable assets or movable properties illegally acquired. Do you think um, you have, as the office as presently set up, has the capacity and the strength to be able to trace properties or acquisitions 
illegally acquired, especially with this technological advancement. Honorable Chair, it is, and it should be, because otherwise then the fight is at a knot from the onset. And uh, I said earlier that it transcends national boundaries, and that's why Parliament passed the Mutual Legal Assistance Act uh, in 2010, Act 807, uh, to help in this regard, in respect of uh, foreign partners uh, uh, and foreign nations, especially in this regard, uh, because if uh, the proceeds of crime uh, are being wired in from some sources, you may not have uh, the wherewithal and the power to uh, rein them in. But Act 959, uh, marrying it together with uh, Act 807, tells, tell one that you need to cooperate with all these agencies, both in and outside of the country, in order to come uh, to an effective work plan. Because without that, you will not be able to do much. So the way it's set up under Act 959, uh, with acts like the Mutual Legal Assistance Act, with acts like the Whistleblowers Act, Witness Protection Act, and the Anti-Money Laundering Act, and the Yoko Act, and all that. If we cooperate enough, and uh, we come together with a, a composite plan, we should be able to achieve the objects of all these acts, and specifically here in this contest, Act 959. Will you be frustrated if, for example, you are investigating a matter in which you needed the support and cooperation from, let's say, our brothers within the sub-region or elsewhere, especially if you need a particular evidence from that jurisdiction and it's not forthcoming to enable you to cure conviction, what would be your attitude and how would you feel as an SP, especially when Ghanaians would think you, excuse me, failing on the job, especially with respect to that particular matter? It probably will be frustrating, but, you know, all these nations are also state parties to the UN Convention Against uh, Corruption and the AU Convention on the Prevention and Combating of uh, 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 Corruption. So that is where we will draw uh, the mandate to remind them that, look, we, 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 we need to be working together. Uh, today, I may need them, if given the nod. Tomorrow, they may need me if the funds are being transferred the other way. And so, uh, it, is, it is called for cooperation under all these conventions. And indeed, uh, I keep referring to the Mutual Legal Assistance Act. It is also one of the gold standards under the UN Convention Against uh, Corruption. That is what we have uh, domesticated here, and it should be replicated under the convention in all these states. Thank you, Honorable. Very well, so I can come to the... Uh, oh, you're here. R all right, you may tell. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Council, congratulations. Thank you very much. Good to see you again after a long time. Have you cited the resignation of appointment as special prosecutor letter by your predecessor, if you are given the nod? Sorry, Have you cited the letter of Honorable Martin Amidu, his letter of resignation? Have you cited that letter? Honorable Chair, another disclosure here before I go on. Uh, Honorable Member was here behind me at the <laughs> faculty and at Makola, and we were closely associated. I have a lot of disclosures <laughs> here today. <laughs> <laughs> so, I heard he had resigned. I haven't read the letter. And to disclose also that you, you used to give us grandfather notes. <laughs> okay. I would, with the permission of Honorable Chair, read a few portions to you. He says on page one that, oh, just a few portions. He says, limited transaction convinces me beyond every reasonable doubt that you had labored under the false belief that I could hold the office 
of the Special Prosecutor as your poodle. I move to another line. Very simple. Page two. It thus became abundantly clear to me that I cannot continue under your government as the Special Prosecutor because we disagree on the non-partisan independence of the Special Prosecutor in the performance of the functions of my office. Even though you've not seen this, I've realized that a lot of questions have been asked from this. If you find yourself in this situation with the president who appointed your predecessor, what will you do? There are two choices open to a person. You either resign or you go ahead. Of course, I persevere. And if my conscience and my learning of the law, as I said, are going to be my guide, my first inclination will be to persevere along. Uh, because that is my calling, and that is the oath that I have sworn. Unless it becomes so unbearable, um, then I will say uh, the Republic should take its job. But I am not that kind of person i'm not predisposed to that to that to that to that kind of uh, uh uh open confrontation in that in that regard we have disclosed what we know about each other i don't intend oh yes we used to inherit a lot of notes from him he used to actually uh, help us in our learning of the law and so when it comes to his knowledge in the law, I, I can speak to it. But what I can't speak to is whether you go there and wear political lenses. We just want you to know that if you go and wear political lenses, Honorable you will friend, you in line. Thank you. Can I ask a question if you have any? Uh, very well. Can I come to leadership now? Yes, one more part. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I've been listening attentively to uh, the Honorable Nominee's submission, and uh, I heard him mention that he has a law firm. Thinking about the position he's going to uh, inherit, what will happen to your law firm if given the note? Thank you. I have given the law, the law firm will run. I have trained uh, uh, able uh, lieutenants to man it in my absence. I didn't build the law firm around me. It is not personalized. Uh, there are uh, <laughs> clear, clear uh, uh, rules of succession to uh, 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 seats in the, in the law firm. So it will run smoothly in my absence. At some point, after seven years, I'll go swing by again. In any case, it is my creation. Thank you very much. I wish you very well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very well. Chief Webb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yeah. let me also say that uh, before in his attempt to answer a question, he also tells our, uh, the relationship when I had to go to Shard in 2010, I had to contract Ayini and Feli, uh, right? Is that the name? And he was then uh, one of the associates, right? And he, he virtually was the one who led me through. Our, it's just one for that after that incident, even though I paid all my legal fees, I've not, I don't think we've met again. Since, uh, I believe you paid a fees to uh, uh, Bogatanga is empty. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I paid, I paid it to the firm. <laughs> so and I want to believe that. <laughs> that was on the lighter side. Mr. Chairman, I want to ask to determine whether he is eligible to ask questions. Uh, since he is uh, a confessed client, uh, is he eligible to ask questions? I will have a very satisfied client. I'm sure I'm very satisfied. Well, Mr. Chairman, going through his CV, I mean, undoubtedly, you see that he's very hardworking. 
you see through the CV. But my concern was between 2006 to date that you've had the great privilege to, to lecture at the University of Ghana. You've concurrently done so many things. I mean, from Ghana monthly uh, judgment as an editor, uh, a uni and fairly uh, Mount Crest University, Central University, Gimpa, and your own law firm that you, you later uh, established, Cromwell Gray, Electronic Communication Tribunal, and on and on. How were you managing this with your full-time responsibility as a lecturer? Okay, before I go on, uh, the disclosure is that he, he is a very satisfied client. <laughs> it is the training one receives, uh, and all those who went through that great faculty of law at the University of Ghana I would attest to. Uh, the multitasking uh, is something that comes second nature to us after going through that program. So uh, it has become uh, somewhat easier going through that training to man all these uh, 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 positions and, 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 and uh, uh, lectureships uh, and practice uh, throughout these years. And in respect of the other universities, I was more of a foundation lecturer in criminal law. So if you take Central, Central uh, University, for instance, uh, I'm a member of the International Central Gospel Church, and that's the university established by the church. So uh, law faculty being put up, I help establish the criminal law aspects by teaching for the first semester. Uh, Mount Christ University, the former uh, director of the, of the law school uh, who trained us, knowing very well, established it. Gimpa, when uh, our Professor Nesabuchi was there, called me in foundation lecturer, criminal law, I helped him, I, I helped him to establish it. So these were the things that I was doing and also it sharpens me for other things in respect of my life at Legon. Mr. Chairman, he was answering a question earlier about his law firm, and he said the firm will continue to run. I wanted to know what will happen to your role as a special prosecutor if this house grants you leave vis-a-vis -vis the firm. As I stated earlier, uh, that there are clear rules of succession there. And so there's someone already uh, jogging on the sidelines waiting for me to assume my seat. Uh, and so it is going to, it, it's going to be a smooth transition. Uh, I intimated that at the end of my life as a, a special prosecutor, I'll swing by again, perhaps in an, another role. Now, the question is, what will be your relationship with the chamber? when you are confirmed as a special prosecutor? Uh, I believe that is what I'm answering. That I'm hesitant. Someone is ready to take, someone is ready to take my position. That means I'm hesitant. At the end, I'll come back. Mr. Chairman, that's exactly the worry because this act that you said you are going to be very loyal to in 13-2, uh, 13-7, has this to say, the special prosecutor shall not, while holding office, hold any other public office or engage in any commercial venture. So you just handing over to someone, go become chief uh, special prosecutor with the permission of this house, seven years later come back, means that even whilst you are the special prosecutor, you may be earning from that firm, because that firm, you've not cut ties with it. But you've not cut ties with it completely. So this is what the Act is saying you should not do. So that's what I'm asking. How is your relationship with the firm going to be when you become the special prosecutor? And I would say, even as we speak, I don't earn anything from the firm. Uh, I manage it, but I don't earn anything from it because I'm a, I'm a managing partner. Uh, uh, this is the thing. 
I created it. For all intents and purposes, it is going to be partly owned by me. That is not going to change. I'm not going to divest myself of the ownership of the firm, if that is what you mean. But what the act is saying here is that I shouldn't engage in any uh, commercial venture. I'm not going to engage in running a firm. I'm not going to engage in, in this day-to-day -day activities. I'm not going to mind myself as, as to what is going on there. But the fact of part ownership remains. That is not an engagement uh, 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 properly so-called in, in the way it is put here. Unless the suggestion is that maybe I should sell my ownership in the, in the, in the firm or divest myself of it, which I don't think that's what is being referred to here. Well, Mr. Chairman, engaging in commercial activity in the real sense is not necessarily your presence being there. This is a firm that you own or you partly own. If it runs very well and there are dividends, those dividends will be shared and you will be entitled to your share. And this is what the law frowns upon. And that is why I'm asking, how are you going to relate to that? Now, Chair, let me state emphatically. Throughout the seven years that, given the nod, I'm going to be the special prosecutor, I will have nothing to do with the firm. I am only saying, I will come back after my life as uh, the special prosecutor because I created the firm. But during my tenure, there will be no relationship between me and the firm. And you also ensure you don't earn anything from the firm. And I intimated that even now I don't earn. Maybe because now it's not making uh, uh, so much money as a company. Well, that is not the reason. It is because we decided on how to run things for a while. Okay. But will you consider probably applying to the Speaker of Parliament, just as many of us have done, for a waiver? Office of Profit. Because you are a public officer. Even though I am sure that it is with ministers and members of Parliament, I'm not a lawyer, as you may know, but looking at the constitutional provision, I may want to believe that you equally uh, may qualify to apply for that. All of us who have businesses, we don't really run them, but disclose them, get Parliament to sit on it, go through and be sure that the rule that you'll be playing will not conflict with the businesses, and the speaker gives you a certificate, and then you run it. Will you maybe look at the possibility of considering that? Just to make sure that you are on the safe one. Which I will exploit. Mr. Chairman, I know Honorable James Agaga is a friend. Am I right? A close friend. So is uh, Gabby Asare Ochidako your friend? Mr. Ochidako is my professional colleague. Uh, he was my. He was my mate at the Ghana School of Law between 2001-2003. Uh, my firm has represented him in several defamation suits. Well, have you worked together? Have you done any job together? Uh, can you make it clearer? As in personally? You, you, you own a firm. You are a lawyer. I mean, you are a business person, I want to believe. Have you done any job together? As in firm to firm? Is that what you mean? Whether it is as you as Kisi Ejabin mm -hmm. or uh, Cromwell Gray mm -hmm. or in any form, have you, had, have you done any job together? Not with Mr. Shedako, not with his law firm. So you've not you've not been involved in any business that he is also related to? As I said, we have represented him in several defamation suits. And so except the defamation suits, you've not worked together? We have, and we have been involved with a law firm that is also involved at some other end with them, but not my law firm with his law firm in, in any transaction. So have you worked for GMPC? Yes. So you are currently working for GMPC? As one of the external solicitors, yes, Cromwell Gray. 
Is it in relation to the LNG regasification project in Tema? That was one of the off, one of transactions. But in, at present, we are on their record as one of the external solicitors in respect of local matters. In respect of the LNG project, uh, we were local council, not to GMPC directly. We were, Cromwell Gray was local council to White and Case LLP in London. So we were advising White and Case LLP in London in respect of its uh, brief with GMPC here. So we were, we were not GMPC's uh, counsel on that matter in that sense. We were counsel to White and Case LLP. So but you said the records of GMPC will show that you, you've done some work for them. Yes, we have prosecuted uh, two cases on their behalf, one at the higher court and one at the Supreme Court. How did they procure you as, uh, how did they procure your service? GMPC. By yeah. reason of the fact that they became acquainted with us when we worked on the LNG project, because our work output, our work output to White and Case was showing up uh, in their briefings, and so they showed an interest in us. So you see, you know that GMPC is a public entity, and in their procurement of services, they are supposed to advertise for competitive bidding. Did you go through this? Uh, yes, we went. I, I believe they went all the way to the PPA. I'm only asking whether you saw it as an advert, it was an open thing that you went and with others and competed to be uh, either nominated or selected to provide that service. We applied. You applied? Yes. But you weren't sure whether the procurement method that they use were competitive or sole sourcing or restricted. You are not conversant what with that. The process that was going through is that with all the uh, 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 documents and records they were asking us for, it was all uh, designed in respect of a procurement process. Otherwise, they would not be requesting uh, the documents they were requesting from us. And on which I mind you, at that time, as I said, they already knew us, they already knew our work product. But then to insist uh, we come through that channel again clearly shows that they were going through some, some, some procurement process. Otherwise, it would have been just an automatic uh, appointment after the LNG project. So you, you rightly mentioned the White and Case uh, as, a, as a company that you have worked with. Yes. And uh, do you know the, some of the leading partners in this uh, White and Case? Those we worked on on the LNG project, yes. And not all of them. So you know Joshua Sian? Very well. Is he your friend? He's my professional colleague. And you work, you work very closely together? Yes, we had to on that project. Earlier, when you were asked about it, you said you, you virtually didn't even know anything about it until the issue came up. Is first, that what I heard you say? Yes. The first time I heard about Japan Honorable Chair was when uh, Mr. Shidaku called me and said that he had been defamed by a certain MP in respect of, of, of the deal and uh, instructed me to sue defamation on his behalf. And that is when I started researching as to what it was all about and the veracity or justification or otherwise of what the sitting MP had said. Because if I was going to maintain a suit in defamation, I needed to place it in that context. That was the first time I was hearing of the deal. So I will state again, by yeah. no stretch of the imagination was I con uh, connected to it. By working very closely with Joshua Sian in the, in the White and Case, you are very much aware that White and Case was also working with African Legal Associates, which is owned by Gabi. And that is why I stated earlier that we were involved with a firm on a project, which was also involved uh, with uh, uh, ALA on other transactions, but we were not involved in those transactions. And you know that this white and case with uh, African legal associates were deeply involved in the EJAPA? I have no idea. In the Anas Amiyao Anas case, you were, the, you were the lead counsel for uh, Anas Amiyao Anas, is that right? Uh, there are several cases, but yes, uh, we, we have represented in all the cases. The Honorable Chair, just some levity. The one who took the fees in respect of the Honorable Ranking Member's uh, case has just arrived. 
<laughs> I thought it is your firm that took the, the, the fees because the receipt that was given me was not in either Kisi, Ejabin, or Dominic Ayini. It was in uh, Ayini and Feli. Uh, uh, the name Ayini is instructive that it was going to Ayini. <laughs> That was, uh, that was on the lighter side. You said that you virtually led them in all the cases. Yes, on our chair. So did you have unlimited access to the video recordings? Yes, I did. Indeed. Especially in the case of the judges. Yes, indeed. Uh, before I would uh, sign off on any process, a legal, legal process, uh, I would ask Tiger IPI and Mr. Anas Anas to set me and all my team together and go through painstakingly the raw footage, the raw data of all these investigations before we come to a legal conclusion. We have to go through that exercise. So what the public sees is the documentary. What we see is the raw footage which forms the legal basis of, of, of the actions. Whether uh, the outfit is a plaintiff on a matter or is defending a matter. I mean, obviously, I, I can attest to that where you ask, just tell me the whole truth. Let me know exactly what the thing is so that I can, I can, I can defend you. Exactly. So, yes, I, I, I know about that. But where, where some of these videos, some of the judges spared, where some of the judges in the video sped? Uh, not at all. Is it there not was, at all or not that you know? No, not at all. There was one video that was scratchy. It was scratchy. It was unclear. So with that being grainy and you were unable to tell what is on it, a lawyer, I will not advise that we carry that through. But no one was spared. Going through that particular case, what do you make of our fight against corruption, especially in the judiciary? Uh, I'll put it more generally. There's a lot we still need to do uh, on all levels, in all spheres. It's the way our society is arranged. And, 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 and that is why I keep referring to our uh, 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 setup of ritualistic gift giving. Because uh, how do you uh, differentiate between an acceptable uh, gift and an unacceptable gift. Uh, we need to st still have that conversation uh, and to move ahead on that. Mr. I just want to find out, you, in 2019, you were made the, the chair of the Electronic Communication Tribunal, right? Yes, honorable chair. Did you have resources to be able to work? I would wish for more. Indeed, in my handing over notes, uh, given the note, I'll have to exit. In my handing over notes, is one of the things that I'm going to talk about. And I would wish that uh, the funding of the tribunal uh, is divorced from uh, the regulator. Uh, now, it is a very invidious position to be in where your perpetual respondent which is the regulator, is also your paymaster. Now, if your uh, respondent, forever respondent, because it is always the respondent, it is never <laughs> the appellant because of the way the act is. If it is also your paymaster, if on an occasion uh, you get people in charge who are not this crop of persons, uh, I, I would say we've not encountered, uh, 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 things like that in respect of them, but we shouldn't base uh, legal operations on the goodwill of, of persons and individuals. So uh, if you make uh, the regulator, the paymaster of the tribunal that is supposed to sit uh, on, uh, in an appellate uh, 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 function over his decisions, uh, naturally it will be unhappy. I pay you so you sit on my decisions and then uh, rule against me. Uh, if we, we, we separate uh, that uh, uh, association and uh, channel the funds for the operation of the tribunal from another source, the tribunal will be, will be better placed to do its job. But 
there's always a case of hamstringing if you do not meet a right crop of persons or if there is uh, that clear danger of uh, 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 a friction or a conflict because if i were to come out with a decision uh, tomorrow that is unfavorable the regulator and then the next day you send your invoice uh, asking for <laughs> a certain allowance <laughs> the person is human he's going to look at you sideways and say yesterday you ruled against me <laughs> today you are coming for payment maybe let me sit on it for a while it can happen and that is what will uh hamper the work of the tribunal yeah but when, when, when you took over did you try to to talk to the uh justice uh the tiba who had just resigned and... one of which i've always had a uh a good relationship with uh, justice that and because of his association uh, with the university of ghana school of law uh he always comes around to, uh, and we, we we always have uh interactions so uh, picked one or two things, and 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 that is one of the things that he actually asked me to look out for, uh, because uh, that that specter of your respondent being your payment master is a very unhappy situation. Will you will you say that having stayed there for about uh, two years, NCA with its dealings with. Uh, uh, the operators, especially the radio stations, sometimes have hundred high handedness. With, with with my experience, I won't call it high handedness. You know, the the complaints that keep coming uh, uh, in respect of what you will call high handedness uh, is in this context of uh, a, a, a foul cry of the, they are the referee and they are they are also in the game but that is how the law has made them it is a regulator it is in the game so if you come to a tribunal and 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 complain that they are the referee and they are also in the game we will only point out to you that that is the arrangement same as they are perpetual respondents and they are paymasters we don't like it so let's live with it maybe we should go down to the law and see how best we can clean we can clean these things up but high handedness no, I have not encountered it. What we have seen, especially in respect of the radio stations, is that by the time we assumed office, we came in, uh, the licenses had expired. And now the law does not grant my tribunal the power to issue licenses. If your license has not expired, and you say the regulator is unfairly treating you, and so we should set things right, uh, then we have the jurisdiction. If your license has expired, and you're saying you are trying to get your license, but the regulator is putting stumbling blocks in your path, then we have the jurisdiction. But if your license has expired, and you don't have any grounds, but you're just saying, I have been stopped from operating, and we ask, do you have a license to operate? And you do not have a license to operate. All we will tell you is I'll go back to the regulator, apply again for a license, if they then put unnecessary stumbling blocks in your path, then you come for redress. And with that posture, all, excuse me, with that posture, all the radio station cases were resolved in just a few weeks because uh, the appellants discontinued their appeals uh, by, by, that, by the wisdom in that approach, and they went back to the regulator because we, we noticed that all the licenses of the appellants Sorry, the license of all the appellants had expired, which then uh, robbed us of, of, of any jurisdiction. Because if you do not have a license, you cannot operate. And the tribunal cannot give you a license. It is the regulator that will give you the license. So you are in the wrong forum. Chairman, just want to find out, I mean, there was this publication, and I, I think the video to you is here, where after the death of Ahmed Swale, you made uh, uh, a comment with regards to uh, Honorable Kennedy Japan. And to just preface, said even your four year old child will not speak this. I will not want to repeat the word you use. Do you remember that? Yes, I do, Honorable Chair. I know, having worked with uh, Anas and the team, the pain that. Uh, 
you went through, especially all of us, after we heard the gruesome murder of uh, Ahmed Swale. You also said he should have apologized after he, the death. You said Honorable Kennedy should have apologized. He should, apologize? he should have apologized for exposing his picture. Well, what I, I don't remember the exact words, but the gravamen of what I was saying was that uh, by putting out the young man's picture out there on television and calling uh, uh, for anyone who could see him to lay hands on him, he had exposed him uh, in a way that was most unfortunate. And so uh, he should own up to some responsibility. That was the gravamen of, 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 of what I was saying. Because and, and it appeared you... to me that, uh, sorry, it appeared to me that had he not put the picture on TV, uh, many people would not even have known of the young man uh, uh, to go after him. And so it exposed him uh, more uh, dangerously otherwise than it would have. And it is that contest that I place it that the responsibility of putting his picture out there uh, was, 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 was clear. And do you think that up to date he's been held responsible at least for the part that he played? I don't get the question. I'm saying that do you think the Honorable Kennedy Japan has been held responsible for at least the part that he played? Well, I have not seen any uh, processes in respect of that Honorable Chair. Uh, but uh, I still keep to what I said there that and that uh, uh, was exposing someone to uh, very a very dangerous situation and you, you remember in 2018 when the number 12 uh, 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 expose came out and the uh, reverberation was was not just local it was very international all the way to FIFA all the way to CAF and and there was a, a real shake-up so you had all manner of uh, there were so many referees that have been banned and all that uh, as, as a result of this expose uh, not even not just in ghana in kenya and other places too so this is a young man who was the lead uh, uh, investigator uh, you may have people who, who 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 may not want to see him alive and to add to you putting his picture out there, uh, that was a bit uh, too much uh, for my taste buds. Uh, and that is why I, I, I was calling the honorable member out that, look, uh, that thing you did expose this young man to danger. And someone uh, had uh, identified him and taken him out very sadly, unfortunately. And you think, and you think it's the same that is currently happening with Erastus? Uh, I beg your pardon, who is Erastus? Erastus Asari, the reporter for 2 FM. Kindly don't ask another question. The matter is self judice. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, sorry, it's before your committee. Sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. You, you, I'm just quoting you earlier, you said this. You can't fight corruption solely on criminal law. You cannot fight corruption solely through the criminal law, solely by the criminal law. You know the object of the your office or the office you hope to get there by the grace of God, if this come, if Parliament approves of you, that's Act Nine Five Nine. The third object, and I quote, Mr. Chairman, says to take steps to prevent corruption. So far, in all this betting, one thing that I've heard you say is about maybe annual publication of a, a corruption uh, index to show how agencies are doing when it comes to report on corruption and what have you. But you know that we need to do more than that to be able to make real headway. What, in specific terms, do you think we can do to help 
deal with this money? In terms of prevention of corruption, which is actually going to be, when given the nod, my main focus. Uh, if you take, for instance, the context of uh, uh, government agencies, we can strengthen the internal governance systems of all these agencies in order to plug it there. And that's why I keep referring to uh, this uh, uh, idea of making corruption very costly and a high risk venture. Because if um, the, the OSP is coming up with a, a, a risk assessment in respect of all the, activi the major activities that all the agencies are, are engaged in, if the internal processes have been established in respect of reporting systems, monitoring and evaluation and, and all that, if the internal audit systems of all these agencies are all cooperating with the OSP and the OSP has a keen eye there, then down there we will be blocking uh, the crevices, we will be blocking the, the loopholes to make it tighter. So I just want to find out whether he thinks his office may want to help or work together with Shrad and other agencies to develop a clear-cut gift policy. Actually, you mean a reward scheme? A gift policy, I mean, you see oh, the way... Okay, 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 I get it, I get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, uh, uh, I, I, I keep referring to it. In two, uh, some, some time ago, I even gave a talk. Uh, I, I, I presented a paper to uh, officers of charge who were being trained in uh, bribery uh, and, and all that. And I, and I, made, I made reference uh, to, 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 uh, to the gifts, uh, <laughs> the gifts given uh, uh, specter that we face. And I have said countless times here that uh, the way our society is structured uh, is such that it is so difficult to uh, distinguish the acceptable from the unacceptable in respect of gift giving. So, yes, uh, we would have to come together. We would come together uh, to develop that, that, that policy. And that is an, an integrity plan, an integrity check. Uh, the majority there was here telling me uh, why we keep shifting the goalposts. I mean, let's admit our primaries as parliamentarians, our political parties in the campaign for the presidency and parliamentary, the way uh, everybody is on us and virtually it has now become a norm. I, if we don't really work on this, I don't see how even parliament will have the courage because Virtually, you are just dishing out. I, I, the chairman and I will tell you in uh, Pan, Pan Africa, I think Zambia, a member of parliament was deposed from his position for simply giving 50 bucks of cement to a church because they thought that that was something that was baiting. And I said, in our country, this is. <laughs> This is, this is a cream that we, we rock it's a ritual. every day. Mm. <laughs> but the challenge is that they have a clear-cut policy that says that you cannot do more than, say, maybe 30 bucks, and he did 50, and that became a problem. Around this table, people donate 1,000 bucks and what have you easily. Primaries, see the kind of things that people share. People put money on the table in the broad daylight. And now which are these disclosures that I should be mindful of. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I have not mentioned anybody's name. <laughs> but it is, it is glaring. You see the videos going around. You see the videos going around. You, 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 see, you see in primaries, televisions, TVs, uh, uh, I said, uh, televisions, fridges, cookers. I mean, if we don't really come out with this policy, we'll, we'll be, we'll, we'll virtually be collapsing our democracy. Oh, no, I, really yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you, I couldn't agree with you more. And I really, yes, you see, that's the challenge. You see, it's reminding me that the delegates are, uh, are listening to me. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, I know this is a very difficult one, and I don't expect a special prosecutor to be able to really uh, uh, change that much, except maybe in policy formulation and its effort to engage other agencies, the religious leaders, we all will begin to truly talk about this, our attitude. If we don't get the attitude changed, 
people sometimes think that a member of parliament is coming from the space or the president is coming from some different heavens. It's all among us. So our attitude is something that we need to change. I wish you well, and I pray that you become successful in the office. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, do I have your uh, indulgence to proceed once again to note that we are being assured by Kisia Jabin. But Chairman, corruption is said is legally wrong, morally wrong, economically indecent. When the office of the special prosecutor was announced, Subsequent to it, a bill was placed before Parliament. My understanding is for the President to have expressed faith in a neutral, independent special prosecutor beyond the Attorney General. Now, hear this words, and I just want your reaction or assurances to it. The Embassy of the United States of America wrote to then Committee on Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs. And Chairman, these were their words. Our foremost recommendation is that the Office of the Special Prosecutor be seen to be free of political influence and interference. Will you be free? from political influence and interference. Honorable Chair, I give this committee my full assurance. The other leg is not you, it's probably the president who has failed in that bit. That's not you, but I'm being fair to you. It says, specifically the appointment of the special prosecutor should be subject to a transparent, competitive shortlisting process. So maybe we have failed in that enterprise. I'm not aware that there has been any public advertisement inviting desirous or qualified persons to that office. But as I said, it's the appointing of authority. So the president next time must respect that process. But for your purposes, you are here. But that was the observation of the U.S. Embassy. And he added what we are currently doing, ample scrutiny by parliament. So I appreciate the fact that we are scrutinizing you and then what role civil society plays. Now, having listened to you with the Honorable Muntaka, when your appointment was announced, the Honorable Kennedy of Japan has some uncharitable words for you. Do you think that it was just payback because of the courageous position you took in respect of Ahmed Swale, or we should believe the things that he said about you? Thank you, Chair. I never heard what he supposedly said. Will you be interested in hearing them? I don't dwell on those things, Honorable Chair. Yeah. In summary, you were not fit for the office of special prosecutor, unquote. What would be your reaction to that? That is absolutely wrong, Honorable Chair. So it should be ignored? Totally. All right, Chairman, that brings me to what's your position on review of asset declaration regimes? It, it, it appears that it's just not working for Ghana. You declare assets, you file them before Auditor General until there is an investigation by judicial or quasi-judicial bodies. Nobody knows what is going on. Public officers earn income, not commensurate to our earnings. We give legitimacy to it even when it is not lawful. What would be your position? Do you subscribe to a review of Ghana's asset declaration regime? Thank you, Chair. I do absolutely uh, subscribe to that. And that will dovetail into what uh, Honorable Muntaka What would be your proposal? If you want a revised or a new asset declaration regime, what should the Ghanaian public uh, expect from you in order to deepen public official officer accountability in our country? Thank you, Chair. It will fit in uh, the earlier, much earlier answer I gave in respect to a question that you asked. Uh, are you reasonably able to explain uh, this wealth, a source, as much against your lawful income? That is what the standard that we should apply. And with that, and our attitude of filing these returns, 
enforcing the filing of these returns uh, should lead to uh, uh, a progressive outcome in this contest. Because then if you're unable to explain how you came about this, this wealth and the source is concealed, the source is shady, the source is converted, then clearly you would have uh, questions to answer. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I'm holding here fair to the nominee. He would not, since he's not member of parliament, report of the Auditor General on the public accounts of Ghana ministries, departments, and other agencies, MDAs, for the financial year 31st December 2019. And a special prosecutor, assuming you just had a cursory reading, cursory reading of any of the Auditor General report tied to Section 3, uh, of, 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 of your act which gives you ma your mandate and it reads tax irregularities two billion six hundred and sixty six million it says uh, cash irregularities two hundred and seventy six million six hundred and twenty four thousand it reads further contract uh, irregularities that is seventy seven thousand still state money and then payroll irregularities, 469,953. Outstanding debt, 201,000. You just read this, and you are a special prosecutor. What will ring in your mind, and what would you want to do to protect the Ghanaian public with these continuous abuses? Thank you, Chair. What rings in my mind is that I, I, if... It means that I have my job clearly cut out for me, that it is an uphill task. Once again, I'm not naive to, 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 to assume that it is going to be a stroll in the park. And uh, I will uh, recall what I said earlier in terms of the innovations that I'm going to bring on board to ensure that uh, uh, the office is methodologically run uh, with deliberation to achieve uh, the objects under session two uh, as married with the functions under session three. Chairman, the nominee responding to a question posed by the Honorable Muntaka, he was driving you towards conflict of interest. You want your law chamber to run. You have worked on LNG and contract and GMPC. Assuming the matter of LNG or GMPC's involvement in LNG tomorrow becomes a matter for an investigation that borders on abuse of office, what will you do? You see, in that regard, Honorable Chair, we acted as lawyers. We have given our advice in respect of the transaction, and we've pulled out. That ends our involvement in respect of that. Of, of, Assuming of, that part of your advice would lead to the initiation which results in the involvement of a state entity of GMPC involved, is now a matter that is being questioned by your office. Will you... Oh, no, no, Richard, that, is what, that is what I was aiming at, that a lawyer's advice is a legal advice. And this is not an invitation for anyone to engage in corrupt acts or corrupt practices. Uh, that is what I'm... I'm, this, will I'm never, this will never be known to you. And Chairman, I hope I can el 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 elaborate this. Mm. To quote your words, as you answer the question I, 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 I believe posed by the Honorable... Uh, uh, member who chose to be saying everything about you is law 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 your answer was that it is secretive and complex mm -hmm. that's the nature of corruption it will continue to be so corruption is the only criminal act particularly when it borders on bribery that both the giver and the receiver are rewarded and compensated that's why gathering evidence becomes difficult because the person will not hang himself because he himself gave it out. Uh, I'll, I'll read something somewhere in order to be able to benefit from a bureaucratic uh, process. So given that it's secretive, it's complex, give us an assurance. Every other person from uh, 1979 through 81, military interventions in Ghana, corruption was cited as a bane. Even yesterday, it is still a bane. What will be the Ajabin mark? Thank you, Chair. This Honorable Chair, I believe I have stated it uh, more than once, that I'm going to approach all cases the same object, ruthlessness. And that is my mark. Even cases that involve your friends and family members? Uh, yes, I, I have to. 
are very close friends that we know. I would have to. We should expect that of you, an assurance given by you. <laughs> yes, I want, an I want an assurance from you. Yes, I, I'm giving the assurance. What, what I meant by what I said earlier is that I am going to approach every case, every specific allegation of corruption, corruption-related offenses with the same object. Yeah, I've been, I've been researching further on it, and I'm quoting from Liu, 1985, Hattington, 1968, and the argument that corruption serves as an incentive payment to remove government imposed inefficient rules. You have a duty to prevent corruption. The bureaucracy of Ghana has just created a situation where the inefficient rules allows for it as a facilitator. What will you do to combat? By, by rules, do you mean uh, enactments? Uh, or whatever interpretation you give to it. Even getting the bureaucracy speed up. The, the reason why I ask on Abuja is that if they are just rules by way of convention, then those are easily uh, 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 tackled down uh, with the operation of the law. Those, and those Chairman, end. I, I, I want the nominees take the exploitation of Ghana's natural mineral resources have been cited heavily as one major area where corruption is prevalent. In addition to the fact that that is why the EITI, the transparency required of it was done as going to the High Office of Special Prosecutor, what assurance do you have for the country Ghana in terms of protecting the abuse and fraud associated with our natural mineral resources? And what will you do? Thank you, Chair. Once again, it would have to be repetitive in terms of all the things I've, I've, I've stated earlier in respect of what I'm bringing on board and, and my innovations, they are not different from other forms of corruption. They are going to be tackled in the same manner. Are you assuring me that you're not just going to come and your focus will be on public office holders? I saw you read portions of uh, your art, which included the Ghanaian private sector. And Chairman, as I indicated, Natural resource management, this is the observation that have been made with the state in Ghana. Corruption is not uncommon when dealing with the natural resources sector in Ghana. Ghana integrated 2018, and they say that local elites, limited transparency and accountability leads to funding misuse and embezzlement in community-based natural resource management in Ghana. What will you do? about that. Uh, if you uh, as I cited a long act of uh, uh, at 959, it is not just in relation to uh, public officers. It goes also to uh, politically exposed persons and to persons in the private sector. And Honorable Chair, I'm also going to look closely at the activities of foreigners and foreign actors in this country. The reason why I say so is this. It appears to me that although uh, we have laws uh, regulating our activities. When it comes to uh, the enforcement of laws in relation to foreign persons, we appear uh, to turn a blind eye to some of their activities. Uh, the law that will apply to, say, a Ghanaian businessman and squarely uh, fix him with some legal liability will not necessarily uh, apply to a foreigner, from my experience. And so, it also extends there to the activities of foreign, for, uh, uh, foreign nationals and foreign uh, 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 actors in the country. With my uh, coming in, if given the not, that practice stops. It ends. Uh, German, I'm wearing a white, beautiful smoke. German, yesterday I went to Yendi, and the Yana gifted me this smoke. Gift, gift. I accepted it in good faith as in the company of the Honorable Sohine. Now, in your answer to an earlier question, and Obasanjo then when he was working on corruption, and I'm going to give just to get your thinking on uh, some matter. Obasanjo said that what distinguishes a gift in the true cultural sense, Ghanaian, from a gift that is meant to corrupt, is that yesterday my gift was in the open 
first requirement in the open. The gift must be in the open. He added that the gift in the cultural sense must also be a token with no intention to corrupt. Now you are in Ghana. December. You see pickups of government vehicles carrying a ponchi. Pardon my way, chairman. It's good, eh? Good. Yam. Guinea fowl. The assumption is that that is from the public purse or associated with the public purse. We take it lightly and for granted, but that is bleeding the Ghanaian public purse. And public officials accept it with joy and alacrity. Probably, if you want, we accept it with alacrity. Kisi Ajabin, special prosecutor, what will you do about this Ghanaian cultural norm that exceeds the tokenism of a gift and the openness of a gift? I thank you, Chairman. Incidentally, Honorable Chair, the Criminal Offences Act uh, has some provisions in respect to the openness or otherwise uh, of gifts. So, in respect of uh, public function, for instance, the, 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 the clear idea is that if you are receiving it after the performance of your function, for instance, and it is not in the open, as you rightly put it, then it will be presumed that you were corrupted before you performed the function. That is to say, if you receive it uh, uh, in the open. But this will then go back to your proud suggestion with I agree with you that we need a policy, a clear uh, uh, policy on acceptable gifts giving and unacceptable gifts giving uh, because it is a very hazy uh, proposition as it stands now. So, you see, I have been assuming there is an allegation against the president, vice president, or the speaker, as it appears in respect of the speaker, you had announced principle of $40,000. Will you have the courage to investigate it? Yes, Honorable Chair, I will, and that is why I accepted the nomination in the first place. You will serve this high office without fear or favor? Is that your assurance to this committee? I've had a long thought process in respect of this position. And not abandon investigation along the line, along the line because there's interference from the political elite of our country? Honorable Chair, I would have to steer the course. Otherwise, I have no business being in the position. So, VEX relationship, you refer to it again when you are answering a question. Money laundering. The relationship between your office, Bank of Ghana, all the money flying out in Ghana. Ghanaians who a few years ago could not uh, afford or have properties in London, Mayfair, Ninesbridge, have them. And associated with politically exposed persons as public officials. Will you, Kisi Ajabin, have the courage to investigate those matters if they are brought to your attention? Once again, the principle I uh, enunciated stands. If you are unable to reasonably explain... And you share the view that that probably have been acquired from wealth that cannot be explained. Will you do that? Honorable Chair, that's what I was on. That the principle I enunciated stands. That if you are unable to reasonably explain as much against your lawful income, you would have questions to answer to me if given the note. Now... This is not for your answer. I'm sure the whip raises it because Parliament is here. The leadership is here. Deputy Speaker, who chairs this committee, represents Parliament. As for that house cleaning, it's not your work. It's for Parliament to clean itself of how they get elected and how they get to sit on this uh, committee. But probably, you know that under the electoral laws of Ghana, what the Honorable Muntaka was referring to is unlawful. Are you aware? Yes, Honorable Chair. Will you, will you exercise the governor, special prosecutor, that this is indeed unlawful? There are provisions in Act 29 in respect of uh, electoral breaches. So, and they come, Peru's the special prosecutor act. And they come directly under the... the with the, the exception of the subsection dealing with Clause 4 and its subsections. Which other aspect of the legislation do you find a candidate for review of the, the, definition, the definition of corrupt, uh, corruption and corruption-related uh, offenses? 
they spell it all there. And these uh, election infractions come under the purview of the office. If a minister awards a contract to the girlfriend, that's abuse of office. So I remember, uh, and uh, you get to know, what will you do? Same principle, Honorable Chair. State uh, the principle now. The principle is I'm going to look at every matter in the same way. Rootlessness. The, 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 the Ajabin principle is rootlessness. Extended. Chairman, thank you very much. I'm done. Okay. I... I'll ask you a few questions. One of the articles you stated as having published, I read a seminal paper on your CV, is Corruption and the Law. Sometime in 2007 or thereabout. And that was a presentation, not a published paper, on our you? Very well. I've had the opportunity to read it very carefully. I'm always on it. And um, I think it's very exhaustive in terms of covering all, all the laws relating to corrupt, uh, corruption. So you appear to have an, a best eye view of all the laws relating to corruption. But your conclusion is very interesting, and for me that's what interests me. However, it is the implementation of the provisions in the sense of the willingness to prosecute offenders and the interpretation put on the provisions by the judges that will become most instructive. In my view, it sums up the real challenge you have as a special prosecutor. The integrity deficit in our country. Honorable Muntaka calls it attitudes. I call it the culture of dishonesty in our country. It's, it's a culture. Even young people will lie about things just right around you. <laughs> I'm saying uh, your biggest challenge is how to first, <laughs> even the obvious you work with. In the end, you're the head. You send people on the field. You will rely on the report they will bring you. Whether or not it's a true reflection of the facts is a matter you will have to deal with. Whether or not people will give you their true information is a matter you have to deal with. But how do you think we can deal with this canker, this culture of dishonesty, which, in my view, is engulfing us? I'll borrow from... Honorable Chair, I borrow from the Honorable Buntaka's words again. Uh, our attitude as a first thing. Because uh, uh, being appointed as a special prosecutor doesn't overnight uh, make me carry a magic wand uh, to quell all, all forms of corrupt practices. Without the cooperation uh, of these agencies, for instance, as the act itself, uh, uh, spells out without the cooperation of this house. The act actually also says that this house uh, can refer matters to the OSP for uh, investigation and action. Without the cooperation of all of us, I will not be able to achieve much. So on this call, Honorable Chair, I will call on all of us, all Ghanaians, if we are tired of corruption, yes, we are tired of corruption. I need everyone's help. I will need everyone's input. Let's change our attitudes and let's fight this fight together. I cannot do it alone. I'm just but one person. I will need everyone on board. On our that, that is your real challenge, and in my view, because everyone, I tell you, you'll find that everyone is not tired of corruption, as you suggest. <laughs> That is why we have laws here, <laughs> which it envisages that some will still, no matter how costly it is, some will still engage in it. Well, uh, somebody wrote an article that Ghanaians don't abhor corruption. And if you happen to be in a position of giving goodies, you will know that everybody thinks that he deserves it without going through the normal process. Who doesn't? 
If he doesn't get it, then he'll complain about the other person. That is the real Ghanaian attitude. I think that probably we should look at training young people afresh. I suggest that to you, that the policy you should want to investigate, that probably we should start training new people with new values at the very beginning. Hopefully when, by the time they turn 20, 50. Uh, somebody said that who would train them? I, <laughs> I, I was discussing this with somebody and said, oh, what we really need to do is to go dig it out. Prepare the things we think can change people's form new values on, uh, uh, el electronically and send them to young people. They have, a lot of them have uh, access to electronic uh, gadgets and probably we can turn things around. I mean, this is just my suggestion to you. On that note, um, thank you for attending upon the house to answer questions. You're discharged. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. Well, with that, before leaving, if I may acknowledge uh, Kwauman is here uh, representing the Kwauhine in the person of uh, the Marehne of the Kwau State and then the Adonzehne of Impraiso. You Both see, we have stopped acknowledging that. Mm -hmm. But like you said, uh, I, know, I saw an MP driving and maneuvering. That is what mm -hmm. we mean by. <laughs> Uh, as, soon as, mm -hmm. as soon as we stop something, somebody wants to uh, re, uh, return to it. Honorable uh, Chef, uh, pardon me, this is my first time here. <laughs> uh, uh, and be warned that you are not guilty of corruption of the process before you start. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, it's been an honor. Thank you. You are discharged now. Thank you.